Okay, next. What if you punya KC value ni ataupun concentration change yang X punya value ni is very very small. So, actually you can neglect it by and then you can just assume that once KC value ataupun X value ni very small, you boleh assume that bila dekat rice table tu kan, uh, kan bila concentration at equilibrium tu, you boleh terus, um, kalau let's say dia punya concentration of initial, uh, minuskan dengan X ataupun pluskan dengan X, you boleh just assume the is equals to concentration at initial terus. You boleh terus ignore, ignore terus totally nilai X ni, okay? Uh, tapi, however, dia kena follow this 5% rule, okay? Uh, sebab kalau let's say nilai X bahagikan dengan concentration initial tu, if it times you is 100%, if it is less than 5%, then you boleh lah buat this kind of assumption. You boleh ignore totally nilai X tu. Okay? But if it is more than 5%, then it is not okay for you to assume that. You tak boleh ignore the change value tu macam tu sahaja. So, you kena use quadratic formula to find the X value. Okay, so you can look at example 1. Okay? Um, so, for example, if let's say you are the COCl2 decomposes by the following reactions and dia bagi nilai KC kat situ, I'm pretty sure dia suruh kamu cari the nilai of concentration at equilibrium for each of these species bermaksud dia akan jatuh to the second type of solving equilibrium problems. Okay. Tapi kat sini ada dua condition initial yang diberi which is what if kalau let's say dia mulakan dengan 5 mol of COCl2 Yang kedua, what if dimulakan dengan 0.1 mol of COCO2. So, untuk A, dia suruh kamu cari concentration at equilibrium. Uh, kalau let's say you punya initial value of COCL2 ialah 5 mol. Okay. Uh, how can you find it out? Again, you need to do the rice table. R stands for reaction and ICE, initial change equilibrium concentrations because dia bagi kamu KC. Okay, and then dia bagi tak kamu nilai KC. So, sekarang ni, you work it out. Okay, dia bagi kamu mol, number of mol. Dia bagi kamu, uh, kamu uh, nilai volume. So, you need to find the initial concentration. How can you find it out? You know that the formula untuk concentration ialah number of mol bahagikan dengan volume in liter. So, now you dapatlah nilai initial concentration untuk COCL2. Dalam unit M. Okay, tapi you dah conclude kat sini. So, tak takpelah. Uh, and then CO dengan CL2 both are reactants. So, it is safe to assume. Diorang punya initial concentrations. Both of them are zero. Okay. So, how about the change value? Okay. Change concentration untuk CO, CL2 ialah minus X. Untuk both CO and CL2 ialah plus X. Because both are products. And then, so, chemistry coefficient pun untuk each reactant dengan product adalah 1. Okay, so now we know that at equilibrium, the concentration of COCO2 ialah uh, the 0.5 ni campurkan dengan X lah, which is 0.5 minus X. Okay, how about the products punya concentration at equilibrium? Each of them adalah X sahaja. So, sekarang you need to find the value of X. Okay, macam mana cari value of X? Dia bagi kamu KC. KC ialah kat sini dia bagi 8.3 times 10 to the power of negative 4. This is actually small tau. Kalau let's say daripada uh, negative 4, dia bagi negative 5. Uh, itu dah considered as small. Okay. Negative 4, 5 dah sampai ke belakang ke belakang tu. That is considered as small. So once it is considered as small, actually, tadi kita tengok balik, you boleh assume kan? You boleh assume... Nilai X tu tiada apa-apa langsung. Ha, yang ni. Bila KC value tu terlampau kecil, it is safe to assume yang you boleh just totally ignore X ni. So, at equilibrium, you boleh just assume uh, bila 0.5 minus X ni, is going to be 0.5. Macam tu sahaja. Ha. So, for example lah, kalau let's say you build KC expressions for this uh, reversible chemical reactions, you know that uh, concentration of product to the power of product bagi concentration of reactants. So, concentration of product both 
x at equilibrium. Concentration of reactant in this case ialah 0.500 minus x. Uh, apa yang you boleh concrete kat sini, bukan concrete lah. Yang you boleh apply kat sini, since that you know that Kc value dia is quite small. So, it is safe to assume uh, this kind of assumption you kena letak. Bila you assume, you kena letak apa yang you assume tu. You tak boleh tak letak. So, it is safe to assume that 0.500 minus x is equivalent to 0.5 terus. Ha, macam tu. So, bila you dah buat this, this kind of assumption, uh, you boleh terus neglect. Okay, you boleh terus tolak x ni. You tak perlulah uh, pedulikan dia lagi dah. Okay, so you tak perlu pedulikan lagi. And therefore, it's going to be x squared over 0.5 sahaja. Ha, itulah assumption dia yang Miss masukkan. So, sekarang ni, so senanglah sikit. You tak perlu nak buat quadratic expression yang panjang lebar tu. Ha, sebab you dah assume x ni you yang you boleh neglectkan dia. Ha, so, sekarang ni, save your time. So, you just boleh terus square rootkan 8.3 times 10 root of negative 4. So, you know that your x is 2.0 times 10 root of negative 2. Unit apa? Unit dia adalah M besar molarity. Just because of ini adalah concentration. Okay, tapi nya dia ada rule dia. Ha, since that you tahu you punya nilai x ialah 2.0 times 10 root of negative 2 molar. Okay, so you kena test it out. Is it uh, comply with the less than 5% rule uh, sebab kalau dia comply with the less than 5% rule then the assumption is okay so how can you do it okay. so sekarang ni you tahu value of your x yang you dah obtain is 2.0 times 10 of negative 2 molar kan? so you bahagikan dengan concentration initial dia concentration initial dia berapa uh, 0.5 molar kan dia tahu concentration initial untuk COCl2 sahaja which is 0.5 so you divide times with 100% you dapat 4% which is Less than 5%, then the assumption is okay. Okay, so since that 2.0 times 10 to negative 2 molar is accepted, therefore you boleh lah cari each of the concentration at equilibrium uh, for each of the species. Okay, so at equilibrium, you tahu concentration of COCl2 ialah 0.5 minus x since we have obtained the value of x here which is 2 times 10 to of negative 2. Molar, so you know that CO2 punya concentration at equilibrium adalah 0.48 molar, okay. Concentration of CO pula ialah uh, dengan Cl2 since that both of them hanyalah X sahaja. So it's going to be 2 times 10 to of negative 2 molar, okay. Unit jangan lupa. Uh, so unit dia ada, so betul lah. Okay, so for the next example, what if you start the reaction with 0.10 mol of CO2? Okay, so you cari lah, you buat rice table macam biasa. Okay, you masukkan reaction, punya equation ke atas and then initial uh, concentration you kena cari. Uh, number of mol bahagi dengan volume, dapatlah concentration dia apa. Okay, so untuk uh, product, you always have to assume concentration dia zero. Okay, lepas tu for the change concentration untuk COCl2 minus X. Okay, untuk CO dengan CL2. Uh, both of them ialah plus x. So, at equilibrium, we know that COCO2 ialah 0.01 minus x. Untuk CO dengan CL2 ialah x sahaja. So, sekarang ni kita nak cari concentration at equilibrium for each of these species. Kalau you start with 0.1 mole of COCO2. So, kita dibagi Kc punya value which is 8.3 times 10 to negative 4. We know that this value is small. So, can we apply the same thing? Okay, kita apply je dulu. Okay, uh, kita assume lah. Assume that 0.1 minus x is equals to 0.100. So, bila you dah assume, okay, once you have assumed that, so you boleh lah terus ignore the 0.10 minus x. So, you boleh terus totally ignore the, the x ni ha. Okay, since that kita tahu nilai KC dia kecil. So, it's just going to be x squared divide by 0.01. Therefore, kita akan terus dapat nilai x kat sini ialah 2.9 times 10 through of negative 3. Okay, but you need to test this value out. 
Okay, so next, bila you dah buat assumption tu, you tak boleh lah terus ingat nilai X tu memang 2.9 times 10 to the power of negative 3. You kena lah check it out by using the 5% rule. Di mana X value yang you dah dapat ni kena bahagikan dengan concentration initial yang you dah dapat from the rice table which is 0.01 molar times 100%. Tengok, tengok dapat 29% which is besar, more than 5%. Therefore, the assumption yang 0.01 yang neglectkan X ni, minus X yang you boleh neglectkan dia tu, the assumption is not okay. So, you need to find it by using the quadratic method. Okay, so you kena lah buat macam biasa. 0.01 minus X, kalikan dengan 8.3 kali 10 kosa negatif 4 uh, and then you kena make everything is equal to 0 so that you boleh gunakan this formula. Okay, uh, because you have to find nilai of A apa which is 1, nilai of B 8.3 kali 10 kosa negatif 4 and then nilai C ialah negative 8.3 times 10 to the power of negative 6 and therefore you will get the x is equals to 2.5 times 10 to the power of negative 3 molar. Okay. Uh, so, sekarang ni, this is the, the the correct value for the x. Okay. Uh, untuk you cari the uh, constitution of each species at equilibrium. Jauh beza kan? Uh, macam tu lah. Okay, so after you dah dapat nilai X berapa, which is 2.5 times 10 to the negative 3 by using the quadratic instead of the assumption punya method. Uh, so, you carilah at equilibrium, uh, the concentration of COCO2 bila you gunakan 0.1 mol is used is actually 7.5 times 10 to the negative 3. Uh, untuk concentration of CO dengan CL2, since the age of them hanyalah X saja, so you know that age of the orang punya concentration at equilibrium ialah 2.5 times 10 through of negative 3 molar. Okay? Okay, next, I'm going to explain further about the degree of dissociation. So basically, uh, dissociation reaction in a chemical reaction tu, dia berlaku di mana molecule tu dia akan break down into smaller molecules, atoms or ions. Okay? Uh, so, the fraction ataupun percentage of the molecules yang dah dissociate tu kita panggil the degree of dissociation lah with this symbol alpha. So, kalau let's say the dissociation tu dia occurs completely, then alpha tu will be equals to 1. Kalau let's say the, you measure it by fraction ataupun kalau you measure it by percentage, it will be equals to 100%. Uh, it, is all, it is all depends on this formula. Okay. Uh, di mana uh, degree of dissociation alpha is equals to change ataupun value of x how can you find this you can find this out by the rice table di mana c tu kan represents the change uh, tak kisahlah the change of uh, apa concentration ke pressure ataupun the number of mole tapi in this case since that uh, degree of dissociation tu dia measure pasal uh, reaction yang molecule tu dia break down into smaller molecule so it's gonna be the value of x of mole okay divide by the initial value and then kalau let's say benda tu naik in percentage uh, you kali kalah dengan 100% kalau dia benda tu dia tak naik in percentage you tak perlu kalikan dengan 100% okay it depends on the question Okay, so this is something yang not that important lah. So basically, um, kalau termal dissociation ni is actually is a reversible reaction uh, yang di mana uh, is brought about by the application of heat. Bila dia cool down, dia punya product so akan born again to give the original compound. So these are the examples for the thermal dissociation as you can see. Okay, so moving on to the question yang melibatkan degree of dissociation. If you look at this question, Dia beritahu the degree of dissociation of dinitrogen tetroxide at 250 degrees Celsius and 1 atm is 0.15. Dia suruh kamu calculate the degree of dissociation uh, bila the temperature tu 250 degrees Celsius still the same tapi the pressure is at 5 atm. So how can you find this out? Okay, so since dekat soalan tadi dia mention, Total pressure is 1 atm and also the degree of dissociation ialah 0 0.15. So, kita boleh let the x value. x value ni apa? Value change lah. 
Okay, kita boleh let x ni ataupun change ni is equals to the degree of dissociation of N2O4. Okay, and we can assume the initial amount of N2O4 ialah 1 mol. Okay, kenapa kita kena buat rise table dalam number of mol kat sini? Okay, it is because this is about degree of dissociation. So, kalau you tengok definition degree, uh, dissociation tadi, dia bagi tahu uh, it is when the chemical reaction tu, dia punya molecule tu is break, breaking down into smaller part of molecules. Okay, so they break down into smaller part of molecules, okay, ataupun ions, ataupun particles, okay. Tapi yang logiknya kita kalau let's say buat table rise tu dalam number of moles lah. Okay. Uh, so you kena ingat ni. Kalau let's say um, you buat KC, uh, you buatlah rise table in terms of concentration. Okay. Uh, ataupun uh, dia punya unit tu M. Kalau let's say you tengah uh, dapat soalan yang ada KP, you buatlah rise table dalam bentuk partial pressure okay, ataupun unit dia ATM but kalau let's say degree of dissociation then you kena buat rise table uh, dalam number of mole okay. so R stands for reaction I stands for initial number of mole okay, with this unit unit number of mole ialah mole lah and then change ni uh, C stands for change and then E stands for equilibrium so direction uh, takes place between the reversible reaction of N2O4 dengan 2NO2. So, since that we have assumed the initial amount of N2O4 ialah 1 mol, therefore, kalau product, tadi Miss bagi tahu apa, kalau product, you use, kalau you gunakan rice table untuk product, you terus je letak, dia punya initial, uh, initial value dia, tak kisahlah initial value dia, number of mol ke, partial pressure ke, concentration ke, kalau product, initial value dia mesti zero. Okay, uh, how about the change? Since that, kita dah letak kat sini, let x value ataupun change value ni is the degree of dissociation of N2O4. Okay, kita tahu kalau let's say if it is the reactant, it's going to be minus x. Kalau let's say the product, it's going to be uh, plus 2x. Kan? Tapi kita dah assume x value ni is equals to alpha which is alpha is 0 0.15 so terus je buat uh, the number of mole yang change for N2O4 ialah minus 0 0.15 the number of mole of the product ialah plus 2 times with 0 0.15 so therefore the number of mole at equilibrium untuk N2O4 ialah 1 plus kan dengan change which is plus kan dengan minus 0 0.15 which is you will get 0 0.85 mole uh, and then untuk NO2, dia punya number of mole at equilibrium ialah 0.3 mole. Okay, so what can you do here is you can find the total number of moles after the dissociation, which is now the total number of mole ialah 1.15 mole. Okay, after that, bila you dah dapat the total number of mole, barulah you boleh cari the real partial pressure for each of them. Um, selepas uh, selepas dia dah dissociate faham ke tidak ha macam itulah kalau let's say benda ni melibatkan uh, partial pressure you boleh guna dalton's law of partial pressure to find the partial pressure for each of these species after they dissociate what happen kalau soalan tu dia uh, so bagi macam concentration tak ada masalah you boleh buat reciprocal untuk number of mole uh, lepas tu dah cari number of mole at equilibrium for each of the species you boleh cari concentration after dissociation for each of the species by gunakan uh, apa tu kan uh, formula concentration kan uh, is equals to number of mole bagi dengan volume in liter uh, so sama je um, kalau let's say uh, you dapat je soalan degree of dissociation, the first thing first that you need to do ialah you buat rise table in the terms number of mole because penting untuk you tahu the number of mole at equilibrium after the dissociation. Cuma ni in this case soalan minta uh, dalam bentuk pressure kan. So you boleh kira lah partial pressure for each of these species after the dissociation because you have obtained the total number of mole after the dissociation. So now we can calculate, we can find the partial pressure of NO2 uh, which is the number of mole of NO2 ialah uh, 0.3 uh, 
and then bahagikan dengan dia punya uh, number of mole total uh, which is 1.15 mana you dapat ni you dapat it from here okay uh, and then kalikan dengan total pressure total pressure 1 atm and then you will get 0 0.261 atm this is the partial pressure of no2 after the dissociation and then the partial pressure of n2o4 pula ialah 0 0.85 divided by the total number of mole which is 1.15 kalikan dengan total pressure which is 1 atm then you will get 0 0.739 atm uh, sekarang barulah boleh you kira kp lepas you dah obtain the partial pressure of no2 dengan n2o4 after the dissociation dah berlaku so nak cari kp macam mana if you look at the equation you know that kp is equal to partial pressure of product to the power of product uh, product punya stoichiometric coefficient which is 2 bahagikan dengan partial pressure of reactant in this case ialah n2o4 so sekarang ni masukkan sajalah nilai partial pressure of no2 after the dissociation which is 0 0.261 and then you square kan dia bahagikan dengan 0.739 then you will get the kp value for this uh, whole thing after the dissociation dah berlaku ialah 9.21 times 10 to the power of negative 2, ok uh, you kena ingat kat sini tak ada unit because kp dia dimensionless ok so now we have obtained the kp value since that kp ni adalah something yang constant uh, so sekarang bolehlah you boleh cari the degree of dissociation um, at 5 atm ok so next uh, how can you find the degree of dissociation at 5 atm? Okay, previously, uh, you tahu degree of dissociation at 1 atm ialah 0 0.15. So, you boleh letaklah uh, value of change ataupun x value itu adalah 0 0.15 mol. Tapi in this case, kita tengah mencari benda tu. So, it is safe for you to assume that the value of x uh, ataupun let uh, the value of x is equal to the Degree of dissociation of N2O4 at 5 atm. So again, you need to do the rice table in terms of number of mol. Okay, so you masukkan the reaction equation ke atas sekali. Lepas so the initial number of mol for N2O4 still maintain. You assume 1 mol sahaja. And then product auto 0. Okay, for the change number of mol, untuk reactant is going to be minus x. Untuk product is going to be plus 2x. Okay. Uh, lepas tu, so therefore at equilibrium, the number of mole of N2O4 ialah 1 minus X and then the number of mole untuk NO2 ialah 0 plus 2X which is 2X lah. Okay, and then uh, next what you need to do ialah uh, according to the Dalton's law of partial pressure, uh, nak cari partial pressure of NO2, okay, NO2 ni is going to be equal to the number of mole of NO2 which is uh, 2X bahagikan dengan number of mole of total okay number of mole of total ialah kat sini number of mole of NO2 at equilibrium campurkan dengan number of mole of N2O4 at equilibrium which you will get 1 minus x plus kan dengan 2x okay so this is the number of mole of total okay uh, and then kalikan dengan total pressure kat sini yang kita nak cari ialah 5 atm so untuk partial pressure of N2O4 it's going to be equal to the number of mole of N2O4 at equilibrium which is 1 minus x and then bahagikan dengan number of mole of total which is 1 minus x plus 2x kalikan dengan total pressure 5 atm ok so kenapa kita kena cari partial pressure ni at equilibrium ni because kita nak from there kita boleh uh, relatekan dia dengan uh, kp ok because previously we have calculated kp kp ni ialah uh, equilibrium constant in terms of pressure di mana pressure pressure of product in this case NO2 uh, to the power of stoichiometric coefficient 2 bahagi dengan pressure pressure of N2O4 and you have calculated before this the KP value ialah 9.21 times 10 to of negative 2 ok uh, so sekarang ni uh, you masukkan pressure pressure of NO2 uh, squat kan dia sekali uh, Pandailah you kira max ni eh. <laughs> Bahagikan dengan pressure pressure of N2O4. 
uh, and then tak perlu nak squarekan apa-apa because tak ada pun nak kena uh, kalikan dengan kuasa berapa pun tapi equalskan dengan uh, 9.21 times 10 to of negative 2 because this is the equilibrium constant in terms of pressure of, uh, bila dissociation tu berlaku okay so penting ni uh, you kena so that's why dia boleh samakan je walaupun dia hanya tukar dia punya pressure faham tak okay so I tak tahulah, you berpandai lah buat maths ni tungan terbalik, tungan terbalik uh, at the end you will get uh, x value ni adalah 0.068 kan dah bagi tahu kat sini, let the value of x is equal to degree of dissociation of N204 at 580 amp so we have found the x value here ok, so what can you do when you have found the x value you rujuk balik dekat formula degree of dissociation di mana degree of dissociation is equal to the x value which you have obtained here bahagikan dengan initial value initial value ialah 1 and then kalikan dengan 100% okay uh, therefore the degree of dissociation uh, at 250 degrees Celsius and 580 amp ialah 0.08 bahagikan dengan 1 kalikan dengan 100% so it's going to be 6.8% okay Okay, so for this part, you can test yourself out, okay?